Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, here I am as promised with a follow-up review, um, more of a long-term uh, testing of the Neyman Armadillo gauntlets. So I guess to start off, um, they've been out for a while now and there's been some people receiving them and getting them, giving them good, bad reviews. Uh, it's been kind of mixed across the board. Um, I think I'll be able to provide a much more thorough review of the gloves um, with a pretty solid conclusion at the um, end of the video. So uh, this is my set of gloves. I also happen to have another set of gloves which are a, um, as you can tell by the way they look, they're slightly different. This is a probably version one of the gloves. This is probably a version 1.5 of the gloves. Um, this was probably from the first batch that was shipped and mine would probably be from the second batch that was shipped. And um, that's very important for this review. I'm going to be splicing in a lot of video periodically um, about the gloves, uh, showing that I've done some pretty rigorous testing of them, and I've used them now for the last, past few months since I've gotten them in a lot of just uh, full speed sparring um, in my school against all sorts of opponents. Uh, one disclaimer I'll give is that um, the better you get at sword fighting, the less you seem to take um, very brutal hits to the hands. So I had to sort of create a lot of scenarios and whatnot in order to um, take the hits to the hands. But where I want to start with is just recently a video uh, came out from Blood and Iron where they tested a pair of these gloves. And it is actually these gloves. So the gloves they tested are the ones I have in my hand right now. So uh, they tested a Gen 1 of the gloves and they gave a really bad review of the gloves. Like they just slammed the gloves and said basically a red dragon, these are better. Don't ever get those, they're way too expensive, particularly for the price. We'll get into pricing in a little bit, but they're nowhere near as protective as a red dragon. Now me having owned three red dragons, having owned these gloves plus five finger sparring gloves, used many, many, many types of gloves, um, I will be giving a counter to that, um, a very important counter to that review. So one of the most important things about the gloves from, I think the first generation that came out all the way up until at least my generation is they all seem to be a little bit different. And my gloves are definitely better and more protective than these ones. Um, I've put these ones on and I've put them through some of the uh, same general testing. Um, they're okay, but they ha do have a little bit of flaws. They seem to have a little bit thinner materials um, on them. And um, for instance, the thumb in certain areas isn't quite as uh, thick. Um, so your, your thumb tip doesn't quite fit in there as well as for instance, this one does. Um, so once again, that is, I believe, more of a flaw of their first generation of glove than mine, for instance. Now I'll splice in a bunch of video about now of me testing the gloves in various different ways from using a crowbar to having people just hit, hit it with sort of taps and then get them to go progressive harder and harder and harder to a point where they were doing full, more to, uh, full two to blows against my hands. And my conclusion is my version of the glove is um, a pretty robust design. Um, for a five finger glove, I found them quite protective. The top of the glove, very protective. You have to hit this area of the glove very, very hard with crowbar or with a sword in a very static way, in a non-fluid way, you know, where they, when, when you're actually fighting, they sort of glance off or they hit in weird angles. You actually have to target this directly and sort of be moving towards it. So if you were coming up with your with your hands like this and then you took a blow across, to actually feel like any sort of damage could be done. And as you will see from uh, this crowbar footage, I'll splice in right now. As you can see by that, 
I can deliver a lot of damage with a very heavy piece of steel to this, and it won't affect my hand. That doesn't mean there aren't improvements for these gloves, but why I'm doing that is because if you do this with a red dragon, can't even come close to hitting myself with this. I can't do that with a red dragon. With a red dragon glove, I can only tap on it with a crowbar and it just starts to hurt. In fact, I put a little bruise on the top of my hand from the red dragon. So to say that a red dragon is more protective than one of these gloves is a little misleading. I think the red dragon is a good starter glove, but I would never ever recommend it for longsword fighting. I've had injured fingers, I've broken friend's fingers in them inadvertently. Um, they're a starter glove and I would never recommend it for someone who wants to protect their hands. Um, the other gloves I have, the, other, the ones that were in the other review, um, I also wouldn't recommend those gloves. Those gloves are flawed, but the thing is, I don't think I can recommend those gloves because those gloves don't really exist anymore. I also, and this is very important, can't recommend these gloves because I don't think these gloves exist anymore. Most of what was shipped out, I think, in the early stages were all beta gloves and they probably should have been marketed that way. And that's where I do have a complaint is that um, the gloves are in very much of a, um, a building stage in a, uh, in a design and research stage, but yet they're sort of being marketed um, as complete. Um, so if there's one thing that uh, could be done is maybe that sort of wording of the glove could be changed to allow people to understand that they're getting something that may be a work in progress. I will have a bunch of stuff a little bit later in the video about how they can improve the glove. Um, and I know they have another version which they have addressed some of the issues, but once again, I haven't tested those gloves. I don't have those gloves, so I can't recommend that glove to anyone because I've never tested it. And I'll keep stressing to you, this is a good glove and I find it quite protective on that level alone, but I can't recommend it because I don't think this glove actually exists in the market. So at this stage, um, I'm going to just splice in a little bit more testing footage and some sparring footage and whatnot. Um, I may go full screen or I may just put it up in a corner somewhere. Um, but what my goal is, is to show you that uh, the glove itself is protective. Now that I've showing you guys that the glove itself is protective, I need to now go forward with what is wrong with the glove, what could be improved with the glove, and uh, the most annoying feature of the glove, which I'm not quite sure how to fix. So uh, one thing that needs to be changed about the glove is the understanding or the what's written about the glove that it is very hack friendly. They are not hack friendly, they're hackable, okay? Um, if you want to adjust the fingers in any way, you have to spend hours figuring out how they actually did this threading here. And once you figure that out, it's, you know, it's pretty doable after that in order to adjust how tight the scales are and whatnot. But it's one of those things you have to actually sit down and spend some time and figure it out and figure out the way they weaved the threading through. Once you do that, that's fine. And it takes a lot of trial and error. Outside of that, there isn't too much that's hackable about the glove itself. Um, you can't really change too much on here. Um, when I did the threading and whatnot, I had to re-drill the holes. They were too small. Um, th they might have had some sort of uh, needle or something like that that they were threading um, this uh, cord. This basically is like an elastic cord uh, through. I'm not sure how they did it, but in order for me to do it, I had to drill the holes bigger, which uh, didn't affect the glove uh, much at all. Um, that is one thing to note, is that this material is uh, very, um, you, you can drill through it and you don't have to worry about damaging it. Um, so with that being said, though one of the complaints I had from getting this glove, and I, and I think it's across the board, this is one of the complaints that they have for the gloves, doesn't matter whether you read a written review or a video review, is that the fingers come way, way, way too tight. I had to loosen all my fingers, this one actually, I, um, when my sparring session yesterday uh, came loose, I'll just have to retie it, not a big deal. Just uh, cinch it up and then you just tie it tight and it'll stay there. Um, but they came so tight that 
there's two complaints people have that it's so difficult to open your hand that your hand becomes fatigued while you're using them. Or for me, it was a, a slightly different. They were so tight that while I was trying to manipulate my hands on the actual sword itself, it was actually fatiguing the top of my forearm within 15 minutes of fighting. My forearm was so tired that I just didn't want to fight anymore. And I realized it was because of how tight the, the actual gloves themselves were. So once again, if there's one thing they can do probably in the production of these is just make the fingers looser right off the bat. And that'll probably solve a lot of people's problems. So I guess let's get into uh, what is good about the gloves. Now, I'm going to stress one thing again. What is good about this glove I have here? This version I have here. Maybe not some previous version or some later version. What's good about this glove and what gives these gloves maybe the potential to keep on in the future as a glove that could be modified and updated to be a really good glove? So the first thing is this part of the glove, I'm finding this version very protective. As you saw with the crowbar thing, I have to wail on this in order to actually start feeling it. And in no way, shape, or form when I'm doing that, I'm actually ever hurting myself. There's a point where I'm hitting myself really hard where the vibrational shock is doing most of whatever sort of discomfort I'd be getting on the top of my hand is from vibrational shock. Now, on the other version of the glove I have, uh, there, the version one, um, not so protective. It seems like the everything's a little bit thinner and it just can't take as much uh, shock as these ones can. But there's a vast area here that needs to be improved. As you'll see, they made this area divot in, which means it sits with a little bit of this material underneath the plastic, very flush to your hand. I think that does need to be improved. In no way would it take away from the actual functionality of the gloves being able to do this if they simply made this flat and so that it created a pocket of space between your hand and the actual padding itself. So once again, that means there's a little bit of air and a little bit of space between your actual hand and the leather padding underneath um, or the material they have underneath and the actual plastic itself, which means better shock protection. That's actually a pretty darn easy fix, which isn't really going to change the actual function functionality of this glove. Next thing I'll, I'll address here is the cuff. Uh, it's very thick, it's protective, um, and it's, it's, it's angle and whatnot is actually very good for deflecting blows. And it leaves a lot of space, as you can see there, for your big thick coats or your padding. But I think it's too excessive. There have been multiple times when dueling people, when my hand is in sort of this position, where people keep hitting my cuff and they keep thinking they hit me and I have to explain, no, you've literally missed me by four inches. So it, it is a, a little bit of a tough thing, you know, when you're sparring with friends and whatnot, it's not a problem. But in a tournament, when someone hits the cuff, it makes a very loud noise and... I could see that being a problem at some point because how is someone going to be able to see or not see whether that was just your cuff or a good blow? So once again, they don't have to get rid of this, but I just don't think this needs to be as extreme as it actually is. Um, when I have my full padding in here, I still have plenty of room. So they could make this a few degrees less of a steep angle and, and I think it would still be just as functional. Okay, so now I think we're actually at a point here where we can review the fingers, the scales, the threads, the finger uh, caps, uh, the inner glove, and the thumb. So the thumb, I give it a, a pass. Um, this part that's overlapped here um, is quite strong. Um, there is a flaw on, I believe, the thumb cap, meaning you only have this small little piece of plastic between your thumbnail and whatever you're holding, meaning the handle of your sword, and I don't think it's quite enough. I think there for this, this outside cap, I think there needs to be some inner padding there to absorb shock as well. Once again, shock is kind of the theme I have with most gloves. If you can absorb the shock, then you're good to go. Now with the fingers, um, across the board, I think um, one of the complaints that most reviewers had uh, when they got their gloves is that the threads were too tight. Mine were way too tight. So, um, with that being said though, the fingers themselves on these, I give them a strong pass. They are not flawless though. So when you're holding the handle of your sword, you're, they stay relatively um, overlapped on each other. And when you take medium to, I would say nearly full uncontrolled blows, um, this version of the glove, I won't say the first version or anyone else's, this version I'm ha I have right here, um, has protected my hand very well. 
where they're a little bit flawed is what the new version of their gloves I think are fixing is all these areas of exposure here are getting padding. I think on this side as well. Now, I don't know if they're doing it on all fingers, but the one problem area these have is as you're moving your fingers around, if you take hits on weird angles or particularly with the tip of a, of a heavier fetter, um, they turn a little bit. And when they turn, you can get pinching or you can get a weird, sort of a weird compression from them on the fingers to the handle of the sword, which can hurt a bit. I've had a few of those, nothing major. So nothing I would uh, complain about like a red dragon where my fingers probably would have been crushed. But in this case, uh, the scales did their job, but it was still uncomfortable and a harder hit could have actually um, um, injured my fingers. But I think it would have been had, had to have been a substantially harder hit. So I still think that they need to, under, underneath each one of these scales, put some padding. The inner glove itself is not enough to absorb the shock damage and the compression damage when you receive medium to hard blows. Light blows this is completely fine. In fact, light, light blows just usually glance off this. You don't even really notice it. But once you start getting hard direct blows that, that put compression on them, I just don't think there's enough padding underneath this um, to absorb what you need to absorb. So maybe version three with the extra side things they put on here might fix that. We'll find out. Finger caps. So I'm still on the fence about them. Um, for these two fingers on both gloves, I think they work stellar. I've never had my fingers pop out. I think that's because those fingers on both the pommel and the lead hand stay relatively static with what you're doing. These two fingers on the pommel hand, I do have a problem with the caps turning and the finger popping out periodically, sort of like that, um, but not as much as I do with the lead hand. The lead hand, particularly with this, uh, with the pointer finger, that happens almost every second or third pass that that finger will pop out. And it's primarily because of what the thumb work I'm doing with the lead hand and what I'm doing with this finger. They just keep hitting and then the cap just keeps turning. I may solve that by drilling holes on the side of each one of the finger cap and then the lead scale and then putting a thread on each side, which might stop the cap from uh, turning too much. We'll find out. I think I'm going to try that. But overall, I give the fingers a pass. I'm still on the fence about the finger caps. I know um, a couple people have commented to me that if you get hit dead on on them, it actually hurts because they compress in. I haven't had that problem, um, but I have heard that complaint. Um, outside of that, um, the fingers on this glove in this version get the job done. Um, inner glove. That is probably the most... I think the correct word, annoying part of these gloves. So they made them with best intentions so that you could always replace the inner glove. So you have your shell as the inner glove wears out, which it will. You can just get another glove, slide it in. You can buy your own gloves, slide them in, whatever you want. The problem is that um, when you have time with these, I don't think it's a big issue. Um, there are things that could be improved. For instance, when you're putting your hand in, your palm, your palm starts shoving this down and you can't get your hand in. So you always have to sort of like grip it really tight. And then if you've got a glove on this hand, it's quite awkward to get that big fat thumb in there and grip this. I'm able to do it. But if they were to do something here in order to have a thread on there that maybe tied it to this um, or tied it to this uh, leather piece here, so this part of your glove wouldn't move when you're putting your hand in. I think that would be uh, slick. Um, but where my biggest problem is, once you start using, using these and you start sweating in them, everyone knows what happens when you sweat in tight leather gloves. The glove sticks to your hand. So the glove always wants to come out. Even now, my glove, in order to get these off, you have to like pinch your fingers, kind of like wiggle your fingers out, pinch your thumb, kind of wiggle it out a little bit, and then gingerly, take your hand out. Now, the fingers and the thumb magically manage to stay in there. So now if I try to put this back on, so you've got to pinch the inside here. The holes are still open, and you just wiggle in. That wasn't so bad. 
but there are times when your hand is quite sweaty where the glove comes out with you or the fingers pop out and then you got to take a few a minute two minutes it's not that long to reseat everything in there once again when you're at your club and you're sparring with friends not a big deal right if you're in a tournament and you pull your glove your hand out of one of these you know in the middle of a fight because you had to do an equipment adjustment or something like that good luck on them giving you one or two minutes to put your hand back in your glove so i've used five finger gloves red dregs and everything um everything from konings um even um you know spets heavies all those gloves you can take your hand in and out quite easily whereas these gloves you can't so that's not necessarily a flaw but it is a big annoyance so if you are going to use these gloves in tournaments um, I suggest having a partner with you, which most of the time you do, that can uh, do all your equipment just adjustments so you can keep the gloves on. And if you look at things on how quick um, longsword sparring rounds are and whatnot, that shouldn't be a big issue um, at all, so you won't have to keep the gloves on very long. Um, the elastic bands and the gloves. So the elastic bands are also an area which I'm not sure how they're going to improve them. But the first thing I noticed with the elastic bands and the inner glove is you have to constantly keep repositioning them in a nice comfortable way. So when you start gripping, what happens is they bind in between the leather glove and your finger and the handle of your sword and start cutting off circulation to your fingertips. So um, each one of these has three bands. I'm using only two or one band. And I found that was actually one band is enough for the pinky. And I think I have two on every other finger. I've managed to, to adjust them in a way that I've been able to make it so my fingers actually don't um, lose too much circulation. My thumb, though, on this hand tends to lose circulation a little bit from this inner band. It's just a little tight against the leather. Um, so I don't know if there's a better way to, to do that. Um, I haven't thought of any um, um, clever ideas yet. But nevertheless, the bands are a little bit annoying with the inner glove. So with the inner glove itself, um, if they could think of a way to secure it better and to secure the fingers without having to permanently glue it in there or something silly like that, I would say please do so. It'll make these gloves much better. All right, one more thing about this glove. Using it with other weapons other than longsword. Um, I did use it with other weapons. Um, I found any sort of weapon that's got a large handle that allows you enough space like a fetter to, you know, switch your fingers into pistol grip or, or hold hammer grip style on like an arming sword or um, something like that, the gloves work quite well. Where I ran into a problem is when I was using a side sword with a finger ring guard and uh, when I put my finger over the cross guard, the scales interfered too much with the actual cross guard or the sword itself and I could just never get my fingers comfortable and my actual pointer finger would get so fatigued trying to find the ability to be comfortable on there that it I just stopped using them at all for side sword. Um, also when using for side sword the weird angle it would put my hand at when I gripped the uh, weapon it would actually leave so much space between the handle I could stick my finger in um, between my pinky and the handle because once again here this it, it seemed to just interfere there on a, on a shorter handle um, so once again it's it's selective on what weapons you can use this for for long sword no problem I think for anything where you're gonna um, where you're actually gonna use it more like an arming sword I think this would be usable even maybe a saber it might be usable but once again it's probably too bulky for a saber but uh, nevertheless for um, for uh, side sword I couldn't use these at all and uh, finally, I think you guys also want to know about the pricing. So I bought these on the initial production pricing, which was, I think, 270 pounds, a little over 400 Canadian or so. And then um, now they're up to about 300 pounds, which is now they're almost shipped and everything, a $500 glove. So that comes down to, is that worth it? Now, in many other reviews, a lot of people are saying no, because the gloves, they're just got too many problems. They're flawed. They're kind of in better stage. We shouldn't be paying 300 pounds for, for a glove like that. I actually kind of got to agree with that. Um, I think they are a little too expensive for the stage that the gloves are at. I might be able to change my opinion on that if I see the next version of gloves they have. But right now, um, I was happy with what I paid for these gloves because once again, with this version of the gloves that I have right here, I felt safer than I felt with five finger sparring gloves and with red dragons. Um, so 
the one thing about five finger sparring gloves, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but I've got a very big scar that I got last fall around September. Took many months to heal. Sorry for fingering the camera. Um, that was from a the resin breaking on a five finger sparring glove. I also have, I don't know if this scar will show up on this finger, resin broke here as well. Now that's with inner gloves. Resin is sharp. And when resin snaps, it cuts through things. And if it would have been a millimeter over, I may have lost mobility in this finger because it may have actually severed tendons. Luckily, it went down the side of my knuckle and not straight on my knuckle. So because of that, um, I no longer buy five finger sparring gloves because I think they're too dangerous. The resin stopped my finger from being busted, but it almost caused as equal amount of damage with the resin itself. I've never in any way felt that sort of danger with one of these gloves, but particularly the glove I have right here. I've been hit pretty hard on the fingers and I've been able to say, oh, that could have more protection or, oh, that needs more padding or that kind of stung or, you know, that's kind of the reaction I get with these gloves. In no way, shape or form am I ever worried about my fingers being crushed or, or damaged in a very weird way. Now that doesn't mean that there are other people out there with a different version of the glove that might have a different opinion of that. There are some people who think that the fingers are too weak and um, can be broken in these. So my final conclusion on the name and armadillo glove is right now, I still think these are in a beta stage, not in a full sta sale stage. So I say buy them. Um, if you want a glove that um, you can help um, actually get them to a level where they might be a really solid, good glove in the future. Um, and once again, I, I have a problem recommending these gloves because I don't really know what I'm recommending. I don't know whether I'm recommending a version one or a version two or a newer version or that sort of thing to the public. And that's obviously something I honestly can't do, right? This glove that I have right here, um, I would say gets a pass from me. It's got a lot of flaws, a lot of things that I've discussed that need to be improved. Um, but when I've been using it now for the past uh, two or three months, I've never felt in any point that I've been threatened in any way to have my hand injured, particularly up here. And the fingers, I would say a little less so, but as long as I'm fighting smart and whatnot, I still feel safer in these than I do 100% in Red Dragons and safer than the five finger sparring gloves that I've used for two years up until this point. So thanks for watching. Um, I was hoping I was able to give a very informed review of these gloves um, and a very honest opinion of the gloves. I, I want them to succeed with these gloves because uh, I believe they do have a lot of uh, good properties to them. And the fact that I've been able to um, use different versions of them and experiment them on them and sort of like reseat the fingers, um, I think I've been able to give you guys a very good review of these gloves. Um, so you can make an informed dec decision on whether you want to purchase them or not. Um, I, I really like Neyman as a company and the fact that they listen to and watch all these videos and they improve things and they make everything better um, and they make so much customized armor out there. Um, you have to give them credit for trying to create something like this in the time frame that they did. And I want to stress that. When they announced they were going to create these gloves, they got these gloves out onto the market quite quickly. That might have been part of the problem, as they might have needed a little bit more um, R&D work on these before they put them out, or advertised that these are strictly beta until we say otherwise. Um, but Neyman has that ability. They have that ability to put something out on the market that they say they are going to, because as we all know, we're all waiting for the pro gauntlet. We're all waiting for these other gloves to come out, and they've been in production for years. So you know, you got to give it up for Naaman to actually getting these out to everyone. Um, whatever feedback you guys can give, I think is invaluable for them because it will help them make these gloves much better. So thanks for watching. Uh, please tune in for more videos. When my Naaman Thought Gloves, gloves come in, I'll do initial unboxing and first impressions of them. I'm kind of excited about those gloves. Um, just in case you're wondering which gloves those, those are, those are the ones that are sort of the pig gauntlet where your three fingers are together here and it's got the mobile uh, pointer finger. So uh, look for that video coming soon. Thanks for watching. Have a good day or evening wherever you are. Thanks. Bye.